What I'm going to demonstrate is how to install a web server on a Windows computer. But before I talk about how, let's talk about why. Why do you want a web server, which normally is something that lives over the internet, on your personal computer, whether it's a laptop or, uh, or you know, your desktop? The reason is that it makes it very quick to test things the way they're going to be when they're on the internet, but without having to be on the internet, without having to, for example, use an awkward FTP program to upload things that SiteGrinder doesn't automatically upload, uh, things like that. Uh, and in particular, it's useful for testing WordPress themes without having to apply them to a live blog on the internet. So uh, you can build uh, a WordPress theme in SiteGrinder and then deploy it right to actually a web folder that's sitting on your computer. And how does that work exactly? Well, the interesting thing is that a web server is just a program that waits to have a browser ask it for things, right? And normally the browser is sending those requests over the internet to some distant computer. But actually, the two programs can talk to each other right on your computer. So the web browser running on your computer can get requests from the browser running on your computer. The URLs for doing that are different than those you may have used to talk to distant web servers. And so we'll get into that a little bit too. The other thing to be aware of is that when you have a web server running on your computer, it uh, can have security issues because, for example, if your uh, web server is allowed to take requests from computers that are distant from your computer, then you essentially become a remote web server. So you want to be careful uh, what you put in the web folder. And this is the folder that the web server will use. Uh, basically, the web server will only... Uh, pass things on from that folder. So we'll also talk about what that folder is. Uh, a few years ago, setting up a web server on your computer was really difficult and, and kind of an awful process, but now it's, it's, it's really easy. And uh, so let's actually just go through the small number of steps that it takes to install the web server, and then we'll install WordPress in the web server. And on the way, we'll talk about some of the, the issues involved uh, in, in having this running on your local machine. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up Internet Explorer. I'm going to check out all the awesome content on the default page that Internet Explorer brings up later. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the website wampserver.com. That's W-A-M-P server.com. WAMP is actually the product we're going to use here to be our, our local web server on our computer. The reason it's called WAMP is it's like so many things having to do with the internet, an acronym for Windows Apache MySQL PHP. I'm not going to go into what all those things are because you don't need to know if you're a SiteGrinder user, which is one of the great things about SiteGrinder. But what we're going to do is just, uh, first of all, switch this website into English. For some reason, it keeps coming up in French for me. And then we are going to click on download the latest release of WAMP Server. And uh, at this point, you will pick 64-bit or 32-bit, depending on your uh, version of Windows. I'm going to download the 32-bit. And when you click download, it's going to take you to SourceForge. Uh, depending on your browser, it may ask you if you want to run or save. I'm going to go ahead and just save this. The installer has finished downloading, so I'm going to run it. And I will just kind of page through these little installer screens. Uh, notice that we'll be installing it at the top of our C drive by default in a directory called WAMP. I'm going to create a desktop icon just so I can easily launch it when I want to and finish the install. It's going to ask us to make Firefox the default browser for WAMP server. I'll go ahead and agree with that. If you want, you can select a different one like Internet Explorer. And you can just ignore uh, these mail settings because those are really for remote installations or running on a real web server. All right, and we'll go ahead and launch WAMP Server and notice what happens when we do that. Take a look up here. We've now got a little mini icon for the WAMP Server. And this is actually the, the place where you access uh, all the things that you frequently want to access having to do with your installation. You can stop the web server from here. You can go to, uh, for example, a, a little home page here. And let's go ahead and do that. So take a look at this page that has come up now in our browser. We have a, kind of a weird URL up here if you've never used a local web server before. It uses the word localhost 
instead of, uh, uh, you know, medialab.com or some other kind of normal internet uh, or even an IP number. Uh, and that's what you're going to use to get to this uh, WAMP configuration page. It's kind of interesting what's happening here. Basically, the browser is asking your local computer to provide it with the default web page that it has. And since WAMP is the only web server running on your computer, you are getting the WAMP configuration page. Normally, what you'll do is you'll use localhost as uh, the, the top of the URL, and then you'll type in uh, other uh, page names or directory names to get to uh, files that that uh, you can get to from from uh, WAMP. So uh, we'll we'll talk about that more later. In this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go into this little link here called PHP My Admin. Uh, back in the old days, manipulating the so-called SQL database, which is the database that uh, that this system is set up to use, and is a standard database used on the internet. Uh, it used to be really difficult, command line driven, so you had to remember all of these commands. Now it's easier, but as you can see, there's still quite a lot of complexity to all of this. So luckily, you can ignore most of it. Uh, what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to uh, take the default power user name for this whole system, which is root, R-O-O-T, and we're going to give it a nice, hard to guess password uh, for security purposes. So. What we're going to do is go to Privileges. Then we're going to come down to this uh, localhost root user. And just don't worry about what any of this means. Just follow what I'm doing. So uh, click on this little edit guy. So intuitive. Okay, and then scroll down. And let's give, us, give ourselves a nice uh, hard-to-guess password. Hard-to-guess is a good one. And click the go button. All right, so now we have uh, the root user should have the password hard to guess. So we will see if that works. Then uh, what we're going to do, uh, so what we're going to do is now go back to the PHP MyAdmin homepage. And we're going to create a new database to use for WordPress. So. Uh, all we have to do is just type in the word WordPress here, and I recommend you use that name for your database because it's incredibly easy to remember, and click the Create button. All right, so that's all we have to do in PHP MyAdmin. We've set our password, and we've created a new database called WordPress, and we should be good to go with that. Before we install WordPress, let's actually take a look at what we have on our C drive now that WAMP has installed itself. So we'll go to the WAMP folder here, and we'll open it up, and let's see what we have. So we have the WAMP EXE here, which is uh, what you want to run if WAMP isn't running. And really, the only other thing we need to worry about is we have this www folder. And this is, by default, the folder where all the stuff you want WAMP to serve in other words, the stuff you're going to access from your browser uh, to be. So right now, it just has a kind of default uh, index PHP page. What we're going to do is we're going to copy WordPress into this folder so that WAMP can serve it to our browser and we can manipulate WordPress uh, through that. So that's what we're going to be doing. So I'll just leave that window open. Now I will launch Internet Explorer. And at this point, I think I will spend some quality time just kind of browsing the entertainment news here. Uh, actually, let's not. Let's go, let's go to WordPress.org. That's important. WordPress.org instead of WordPress.com is where you find the actual WordPress installation. So on this page, you click the download button, but they're going to disappoint you because you have to go to another page and click yet another download button. And we will tell Internet Explorer that we weren't crazy when we clicked that. So go ahead and save it. And when it finishes, we will view our downloads. Now, this WordPress download is a zip file. So I'll click the Open button and just browse our zip file that way. Close these other Internet Explorer windows. Okay, so now here's my www folder. 
and here is my WordPress folder. And I'm literally just going to drag it over. Believe it or not, we are almost finished with this configuration installation process. All right, now that WordPress is there, let's open up a browser. And we're going to just type in localhost and see what we get. And we get our configuration page. So let's type in localhost WordPress. Okay, so now we are at the beginning of the WordPress configuration process. So uh, again, let's just review, look at this URL here, localhost, remember that takes us to the default uh, WAMP web folder, which is that www folder that I showed you earlier. And then inside there, I put a directory called WordPress. And when you ask the web server for that directory, it's going to give you the uh, default index page. And the default index page for WordPress, if it isn't configured, is a nice little page that says, hey, I'm not configured. Shall we configure? And we want to say yes. So let's go ahead first and create a configuration file. Then we can just ignore all this text because you're on this nice guided tour video. So we'll just click let's go. All right. Remember that database that we made called WordPress? Yeah. Well, that's, that's the default here. So let's just leave that. The username is going to be root. The password will be the password that we gave it, which was hard to guess, but easy to remember, right? And then localhost, we're going to keep as our database host. Just ignore this field also and just click submit. All right, so we're doing good here. So we're going to now click the run the install button. Now, uh, to fill these things out is really up to you. This is not going to be, of course, a real WordPress site that's available to the world at large. It's just going to be your test site. Uh, so we could call it uh, test WordPress, for example. Uh, username admin is good. Put in a password you can remember. Then email address doesn't even really matter because uh, you're not going to be probably communicating with this. But you might want to put in your real email address just in case you have to retrieve something that's email only. And then you click Install WordPress. Then click Log In. And now here we are in the WordPress dashboard. Um, the, uh, at this point, you can create a blog. Uh, you could apply a theme to a blog over here in the Appearance Settings. And uh, just tons of stuff that you can do here. This is just like being uh, you know, in a WordPress admin uh, online. So uh, that stuff is all up to you. But there is one other thing I'd like to cover, which is how you actually install your themes when you create them with SiteGrinder. And uh, to do that, you're going to deploy the themes uh, into the WordPress folder into the right place. So notice I'm just going into my WAMP folder, my www folder in there, where we put our WordPress folder. And now that we've configured WordPress, there uh, is a ton of stuff in here. We can go into WP Content, and there you will find the Themes folder. And that is where you'll see there's only one theme right now, the default theme called 2010. And right into this folder is where you want to put your theme folders that SiteGrinder creates. So if you deploy directly to this Themes folder, SiteGrinder will create a folder, name it what you named your theme, and you'll be ready to apply it in WordPress next time you go into the WordPress admin, or if you deployed it somewhere else, just drag the folder into this folder and you'll be good to go. And that's pretty much uh, how you deal with getting a server with WordPress and SiteGrinder themes uh, on a Windows machine.